wanna tell you a story. Wanna tell you about my town. Wanna tell you a big fat story. Almost 30 years ago, Bob Geldof assembled a group of friends and fellow performers to create one of the most memorable collaborations in music history. Although not on that scale, Lisa Azizian, John Shea, and Joe Merrick invited artists from across the South Shore and beyond to collaborate on a record to bring awareness to the work of the One Fund. This is their story. With all the lovers, beggars, and teens. How about the cool? I mentioned to Lisa, and Lisa's the the marketing genius of the team. So we, she kind of helped me pull it all together, and it happened last night. John's a fast mover. You know, when something comes up that is that he's very passionate about, you know, he mobilizes so fast. So the fact that we could get Joe on board, Joe Merrick on board, and then bring. You know, we had 20 folks, we had probably 25, 28 people lined up to join us yesterday. But then to have 20 of them come and participate, spend a few hours of their day, um, was just amazing. Uh, John Shea from WATD emailed me asking me if I would do the music for uh, uh, Love That Dirty Water. And I just emailed him back because he knows I can pull a, pull a song together pretty quickly and play all the instruments. So. Um, I emailed him back and said yes, and then he started facilitating who was going to sing on it. So I'm just going to do one at a time. And the first, the lineup, I'm going to have you sing the fourth line, John. Okay? Uh, want to tell you a story? I want to tell you about my time. Well, once we had all the singers straightened out, we had the lyrics and we had assignments for people, uh, we just started from, do, we, we, we were going to do it in two phases. One, get the lead vocalist done, and then get the gang vocals done. And we had a list, and we just did one one artist after another. Thank you for doing this. Hey, thank you for having me. Thank you for accommodating. Sure. I had the first line of the. I didn't. Re I didn't quite realize the the complexity of having the first line, but it sets the tone. Here, we got some headphones for you there, and it's gonna be pretty short. Wanna tell you a story? Do you want? Let's do it. Do you want so story like or do you want? How do you want me? How do you want me to say that right word? Being able to put together a track that not only can have that spirit behind it, but then with all the proceeds and wherever it goes to have it bring attention to that, it's it's almost like twofold, because the actual laying down of the track and the artist bringing their sound and bringing their their heart to it, that's one half of it, and the other half I think is the part of it going out there and it being spread out and people being able to hear it and recognizing that. There's people that are out there every day wanting to give back in that, in that respect. I got a message via Facebook and it just said we're doing a, a thing for charity and uh, we're going to be recording down at Joe Merrick's place, uh, redoing Dirty Water with a bunch of local musicians. And I said, cool. I was having a conversation with someone how art is such a fragile thing and how it needs a lot of validation for it to continue and for people to still feel inspired and like their art is, is worthy. Um, so kind of a situation like that, I think it's a great opportunity for people to get a little pat on, their, on the back from their fellow musicians and colleagues and just help them keep smiling through, this, through the process of creating. When we far, first started the show, one thing I said to John was, I'd love to help, I'd love to be part of this, but let's have a component where people can come together whether it be education, whether it be creating our own yeah. concert of some sort or festival of some sort, but something where we're m making sure everybody meets one another. And this was a great example of having that come true. You know, I have to say, I got a chance to be in the studio because we did have folks recording uh, singly in the studio and then we did some group vocals. But it's kind of more fun outside, <laughs> where everyone was hanging out and jamming, and you were singing and playing guitar, and it was great. Thank you. It was super to be part of it, for sure. While we were all sitting outside, we decided just to pull out all of our guitars and cajones and crazy harmonicas and kazoos, and it was just really cool to jam with everybody on their original stuff or cover stuff and just appreciate all that talent while we were just all sitting there waiting. That's 
had my guitar in my car, and I don't know who else, somebody else had a guitar too, um, and they were just being all passed around. So it was just, it was just cre creativity, and what was really nice about it was, everybody felt comfortable, I think, to do their own songs, yet everybody was jamming on them. So it's like, that's kind of an interesting aspect for singer-songwriters, to play and be able to let other people put their, their spin on your song a little bit, whether it be a little bit of lead guitar or lead kazoo or whatever anybody was doing. When it was my turn, I came up, and I came up with my sister too, and we came up and there was cameras and lights and, and um, it was a little intimidating, I have to say. I've done this before. I've done the whole recording thing before and I've been filmed before, but for some reason this seemed like a bigger deal. Not necessarily a bigger deal, but it was just like, it was a pressure on because everybody's here. You know what I mean? And everybody's a musician. So um, I was definitely nervous, and I had a lot of coffee that day. And I was just like a spaz, and my sister was there too, and so that was fun. There was the sister chemistry going on while while I was here. I want to tell you about my town. Well, a project like this, uh, I mean, we had such a great turnout. It really shows the heart of Boston, and and that our heart goes out to everybody affected by this, and that we can do something positive with music. Um, you know that. Lisa and John up at Almost Famous are doing an incredible job of, of connecting artists and musicians and giving them an output for their music and now we have something to do that can help everybody else and help everybody heal and feel better uh, about what's happening and give back. I'm really, really, really happy to be a part of this circle. I think that's what I realized when being here with everybody and just in the random conversations I was having with people it's a community and it's a tight-knit community and we're all musicians and we're, it's funny because like we're all kind of fighting for the same gigs like there's only so many gigs to be had around town and we're all local musicians who are filling those spots so it should be in theory it should be kind of a little bit of um, friction but there isn't it's more of like a it's more of like a tight-knit like everybody helps everybody out everybody encourages everybody everybody pushes everybody you know what I mean like it's, it's a really cool thing to be a part of. I just thought it was a lot of fun. It was, it was, ve it was a lot of fun to get together with that, those kind of, um, everybody, singer, songwriter, that's used to doing their own thing, and then everybody got together and just, it was, it was such a nice vibe. Everybody was in the same place, which was very nice. Everybody was in the same place, in the same setting, and even the people that weren't necessarily outspoken, they were still, in, they were still there and involved in the, in the mix, because I think when you get a lot of singer-songwriters together, you're definitely going to get your outspoken ones, and you're going to get your quiet ones, and you're going to get your... There's all sorts of different types, but everybody had their moment to sing, and even though we had to coax some people out of their shells, that was good. We did that. Um, and it was just it was an awesome experience. I was happy to be part of it. Very happy. Musicians are just such free, creative, happy, you know, generally happy um, people. And it's really cool to like be a part of this big, like, musician soup, I guess. I don't know. It's awesome. And I love it. And it was, it was just a really cool day. I'm so glad that John and Lisa brought all these people together. That was very cool. When I came up in this town, we didn't have this. So nobody really knew each other like this. There was no real support. Now you can be 15 years old and in a band and be on the radio and get yourself out there. I didn't have that, so it's really fabulous, and I met 20 people I didn't know before today, and they're all great people. We had a great time. Uh, you never know with musicians, but these guys were awesome. So it provided us with an excuse to get together and be a music community just for a little while, which was cool, and, and it's helping One Fun Boston, which is great. I mean, I just read somewhere that they still need more donations and to be a part of that and support our city it's awesome but um, there's a major major undertone to that just a reason to get together and be present in our com community that people see online to make it real to manifest what everyone's kind of been working on and and to show show people that yes we are working we are out there trying to do something and look what we can do if we all work together it's just living living proof Water!